We're reading The Sherwood Ring by Elizabeth Marie Pope. We are starting on page 88, and see here, it will be the full, last full paragraph of that page. <clears throat> the door swung shut again behind Lieutenant Featherstone's filthy back, and the rest of us came cower crowding up around the table to look at the cipher letter. It was, I was so excited that for a moment I could hardly even read the words on the paper as I stood peering down at it under the cover of Dick's elbow. Better meet every evening making us elegant rich music at invitation, letting loathsome bald aged tyrants. Oh, merciful heaven, Dick's voice was saying ruefully. It is a cipher, sure enough. What's the difference? commanded Colonel Van Sputter. I suppose this man, Twill, can be forced to tell you the key. If Peaceable Sherwood's men could be forced to tell anything, Sputterers, they wouldn't be in his gang at all. I'm afraid we'll have to struggle on by ourselves. It can't be a very difficult cipher. That's one good thing. Old Jasper's too simple-minded to understand a complicated one. It looks complicated enough to me, I said, finishing the letter and beginning to read through it again. The words as they stand now don't seem to make any real sense. And why has he written so many of them with capital letters? Look, Dick, there's meet us at and wait a moment, Dick. Doesn't that sound as if it might be? Good Lord, so do it does. Go on, Eleanor. All the words with capital letters. Never mind the rest. They'll be put in simply to fill up space and create confusion. Meet us, I read, at Bald Creek, sorry, Bald Rock for Raid on Supply Train, finished Colonel Van Sputter triumphantly. Why or what supply train would that be, Dick? There's only one on the road just now. Moving up to the Central Valley with gunpowder for West Point, said Dick, turning the cipher letter over restlessly in his hand and looking down at it again. But I thought, he added rather slowly, I thought that was too much for even peaceable to tackle. Charles told me they were sending a whole armed guard down to meet it. <clears throat> Al, all the better. He'll have to come with every man he can lay his hands on, and we'll haul in the whole gang at one swoop. I've got about 50 rangers of my own with me that I can add to yours, and with 80 in all, it ought to be easy. Yes, Dick said uh, thoughtfully, almost too easy. And by the way, Dick, Colonel Van Sputter swept on without heeding him. I think I'd better be the one to command the expedition. After all, I'm bringing more men than it, to it than you are. And even your men were originally in my company to begin with. Certainly you may command the expedition, Sputters, if we go. What do you mean, if we go? Just what I say. I can't explain very well, but... I simply don't like the looks of this message, Sputters. It's all wrong somehow. Can't you see for yourself? It's not like peaceable. As I said a moment ago, it's, it's too easy. You mean it might be some sort of trap? But didn't your friend Lieutenant Featherstone say he thought it was a perfectly real message? Yes, he said that. Then what is Tunket? Then what in Tunket are you worrying about? Suppose it is easy. Peaceable Sherwood would have to make it easy anyway, wouldn't he? If this Jasper Twill is as simple-minded as you say he is. Simple-minded, yes, but not this simple-minded. Now you hear me. Now you see here, Dick. Colonel Van Sputter stepped back from the table with the air of a man putting, putting an end to all further discussion. I can't waste any more of my good time sitting around here fettering, fretting over what's simple-minded and what isn't. 
Are you coming or are you not? <clears throat> <clears throat> if you're frightened, say so, and I'll take all the men and go by myself. You can unfortunately do what you like with your own men, Colonel Van Sputter, but I want it clearly understood here and now that not one of the of mine is going to stir on any such expedition. Permit me to remind you, Colonel Graham, that I am your superior officer and will be the moment General Washington sets foot in this house. <clears throat> but until that moment comes, sir, you are not my superior officer and have no right whatever to give orders either to me or to any troops General Washington may have put in my charge. Colonel Van Sputter may have been a fool, but at least he was not a sort of fool who does not know when he is defeated. Snatching up his hat and cloak, he strode quivering <clears throat> with rage across the room to the door and returned and turned to pause dramatically on the threshold. Two hours ago, you'd have been lucky to escape from this business without losing your command, Dick, he said between his teeth. Now, you'll be lucky if you escape from it without getting shot for your cowardice. Shut the door as you go out, said Dick wearily. The door slammed and Colonel Van Sputter's voice was raised in the hall outside, issuing orders that gradually died away in the trampoline of feet, clattering of horses' hooves. Then, from the distant camp in the South Meadow, there stole up on the drowsy afternoon air a sudden murmur of activity, so faint that it could hardly have been heard by any ears less accustomed to it than mine. Colonel Van Sputter's 50 men had mounted and were riding out by the lower meadow gate. gate pa Dick paid no attention whatever. He was sitting at the table with his head in his hands, studying the cipher letter again. I watched him in silence for a moment and then rose quietly to go away and leave him to himself. As I paused on my way to the kitchen to clear away the litter which Colonel Van Sputter had left in the fruit dish, he looked up at me and said suddenly, Do you think I was right, Eleanor? Of course you are right, I retorted scornfully, and only a fool who didn't know peaceable Sherwood could have supposed you weren't right for any instant. <clears throat> I'm not so cer certain, Eleanor. Perhaps I've been fighting with Peaceable for so long now that I'm beginning to jump at my own shadow. After all, it may be Sputters who's right. We all agreed it had to be a very simple cipher, and I put down the fruit dish on the sideboard once more. My hands were suddenly beginning to shake, and I was afraid I might drop it. Say that again, I interrupted him sharply. What? You mean about it's having to be a very simple? But that's just it, I cried. Oh, Dick, can't you see it? that's exactly the reason? Look, you're, pe you're pe peaceable Sherwood. You have to send an important message in cipher to a loyal but not very intelligent member of your gang. You can't make it too hard, or he won't understand it. At the same time, you're afraid of making it too easy because there's just a chance that it might fall into the wrong hands. So what do you do? I went to him and caught him by the shoulder, fairly shaking it in my eagerness and excitement. You put in a blazing, great false message along with a great real one, on purpose to hit the wrong reader crack in the eye and send him dashing madly off in the wrong direction without looking any further. Dick, I don't want to go around blowing my own horn, as Colonel Van Sputter would probably say, but I think we've got it at last. By heaven, Eleanor, I believe you're right. Dick put it up his own hand and laid it over mine for an instant. Now, let go of my shoulder before you tear it to pieces and come here and let's see what we can make of all this. It must be something very simple, as I seem to, ha to keep repeating over and over again. I presume the real message is hidden somewhere in the other words. 
the ones we were meant to regard merely as fill space fillers. And you have to count every third word or so in order to read it. Not the words, I'm afraid. There's, there aren't enough of them that would make sense if you tried to fit them into the kind of message this must be. Meet and evening must do, and perhaps invitation or violence at a pinch. But what about elegant, rich music and utmost respectability and all the rest of them? No, I think the real message must be made up somehow out of the letters that form the words themselves. Wait a moment while I get a sheet of paper and some ink. Now, taking first things first, I will begin by writing down the first letter of every word if you will read them off for me. B. I read obediently. M E E M U E R M A I L L B A. That doesn't sound very promising, does it? It does not. Suppose we proceed to the second letter of every word. E E V V A S L. Never mind the second letters. Let's try the third. We tried the third and the fourth and the fifth and even the sixth before we were convinced that success did not lie in that direction. Very well then, said Dick in a determinedly cheerful voice. We'll have to try combinations. The first letter of first word, the second letter of the second, and so on. That system seemed a little stiffer for one of the old Jasper's intelligence but I suppose it might do. After all, Peaceable can probably judge old Jasper's intelligence better than we can. We worked out every possible combination of letters until our fingers were cramped and our brains dizzy with writing them down. The clock in the hall was solemnly chiming four when we finally lifted our heads to look at each other in despair. We're all wrong, I said hopelessly. It must be something about the words themselves. <clears throat> it can't be the words, Eleanor. The longer I think about it, the more I feel convinced that we're on the right track. We've just made a mistake somewhere, perhaps a very simple one, if we only had the wits to see it. Try once again before we go on to anything else. There followed a long silence while we clawed through and scattered papers and sat poring over our blotted lists with our chins in our hands. Eleanor, what is it, Dick? Look at this a moment. It's the list we made out the first letters in every word. B-M-E-E-M-U-E-R-M-A-I-L-L-B-A. -E 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 Where did that M come from? It was the first letter of meat. And that U, the first letter of us. And the A there, the one after the M, at. Then that's where we made our mistake. You're, you're supposed to leave out the words with the capital letters. The ones that make up the false message. They're not part of the cipher at all. Do you see what that man has done? The capital letters would instantly draw an enemy's attention to false message. At the same time, they would serve to jumble and confuse the real message if he were clever or suspicious enough to break through to it as we did. And at the same time, we would also act as sign signposts to warn old Jasper not to pay any attention to them. There's the true peaceable touch for you. Scratch them out and look what we have. B E E M. E-R-M-I-L-L. -L. And that, my dear Eleanor, seems to be, seems to me very astonishingly like the two words, Beamer Mill. Beamer Mill? It's that old gr grist mill on the river road about six miles from here. The one that was struck by lightning and burned down 10 years ago. You must have seen it. <clears throat> you passed to it you have to pass it every time you cross the river and come up from, oh Lord, 
What is it, Dick? What's the matter? Eleanor, take the sheet of paper and get down the rest of this as fast as you can. Quick. Never mind. Beamer Mill. We know that already. <clears throat> now then, A-T-F-I-V. At five, I wrote, reading the words aloud as I put them down, stumbling a little in my haste. Capture Washington. Capture Washington? Oh, Dick, was that what you were afraid of? That, said Dick grimly, is precisely what I was afraid of. Sputters or one of his men must have talked to somebody in a tavern on their way over here, and the word blew back to peaceable as usual. I suppose he thinks that if he can present a real live commander-in-chief to those boobies at <laughs> British headquarters, they'll have to give up and take over his system. And what would become of us anyway, with Washington gone? But Dick, I was still a little dazed with the suddenness of it all. Surely they wouldn't dare. They can't just come out of the woods and kidnap General as if... Why can't they? Of course you think Peaceable wouldn't dare. That's what he's counting on. And the Beamer Mill is the very place to do it, too. The road bends around there under the mountain just before you get to the ford at the mill stream. They'll hide in the ruins of the mill until the general starts crossing the ford. And then maybe a rush and trap them and trap them there in that hollow under the mountain. Another simpler. Peaceable will come with every man he has, and the general's got nobody with him but a couple of aides and about ten guards. Sputters told me so himself. What time did that fool say they would? They were due to arrive here? He didn't say exactly, just tonight. Well, if they're coming tonight then I don't see how they can be passing the Beamer Mill much before six at the earliest. Peaceable's men are supposed to be there at five. It's just after four now. If we hurry the horses a little, we ought to get there in time. Who's on duty in the hall there? You, Tarrington. Yes, sir. Order all the men to mount. We're leaving at once. Yes, sir. Pass the word to the stable for my horse. Yes, sir. And tell Lieutenant Featherstone he can't go fishing till tomorrow. This is the sort of thing that always happens to me, said Lieutenant Featherstone, appearing around the corner of the house before Tarrington could even answer, riding his own horse and leading Dick's by the bridle. I'm so hardened to it by this time that I got into my uniform and saddled up while I was waiting, just on the chance. Dear, dear, what a fine leave I am having, to be sure. What a holiday. You can go fishing tomorrow, said Dick, swinging himself up into his saddle. But that's what you always say, complained Lieutenant Featherstone dolefully. What will you bet I never even bait a hook before I go back to West Point? Sometimes I wonder why I put up with you at all. I haven't had any dinner yet, either. Dick merely rose in his stirrups and shaded his eyes to look down the drive towards the South Meadow, Tarrington. Can't you get those men along any faster, he shouted. And that's the end for today.